Well, thank you for coming back. And we have here two pens to view. And I think I left off last time kind of baiting you with, um, we're doing a snorkel filler, but I also think I left a caveat that maybe it would be better to start with a touchdown, something that's the same, similar mechanism, um, but a little simpler. So start with a simple work our way up. So I was able to dig up this touchdown. This is a nice fat one too. Um, I haven't really looked into the, the specific model of it, but suffice it to say, this one is a decent size and a nice width too. This might be one of the earlier ones. And it's a little bit wet because I kind of had to make sure I could take it apart and things weren't too stuck. I didn't want to be wasting too much time on camera. But this guy is a nice little touchdown. It's blue, it's plastic, very simple, straightforward. And this is one of the, dang, see, it is very wet. This is one of the Triumph nibs, the nice conical nib. And the reason that uh, it's dripping wet is I had to soak it so that I could get the nib and feed off. Um, a lot of these guys, and we'll see, I kind of skipped ahead in time. It'd be nice if I had done sequentially, I would have done maybe a Schaefer back filler. Um, and those, oh my gosh, when they have those Triumph nibs, they are hard as hell to, not Triumph, yeah, Triumph, the two-wheeler nibs, conical nibs to get off. So you wind up soaking, 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 soaking. And this guy actually came off um, with just a little bit of work. So I think if we're gonna do this guy, let's start off by taking them apart. And the easiest thing to do, as you'll see, Here's the tube, here's the uh, plunger tube that's gonna create the vacuum. Then all you have to do is screw off the body. That comes off as a unit. And then you have the sack casing here. And this is actually quite easy. Most of them actually come off pretty easily. They're just fitted on top, just enough to hang on. They're not really making a seal, they're just protecting the sack and um, giving it a rigid shell. And this guy should peel right off that's pretty good so that's actually pretty straightforward and the second we'll let him roll off it'd be okay and then the second thing we're going to do is there is a little locking screw at the end of this thing and it is a straight a flathead um, sometimes i'll have to do a little bit of heat to kind of loosen whatever you know, glue or shellac or whatever was in these. But if you just stick it down, be careful not to s scratch the inside of this. But I stick it straight down. I'm gonna try to find it, let it catch. It says me, there it goes. And I'm just gonna unscrew. Plenty of time, that should be done. Take that out. And it pulls right off. And there we go. I don't think I can get any light in there, but it's just just enough for a little screw at the end. And we'll turn this upside down. And, ooh. Oh, nice. This one even had, I don't see this too often. This one had even a rubber gasket, I guess, that sat on the inside to give it that extra seal. I really don't see that that much. And this is all that's doing, a little flathead screw. That's it. And with that, you can, ooh, there it goes. Pop out, I'm gonna call it a plunger. There's probably a better word and I'll look for it so I'm not saying the wrong thing over and over and over again. But that's it. That's it to take it apart. And there's one more thing to get out. And let me see if I can take a look at it. And yeah, there it is. And let's see, let me grab my special tool. It's a sewing needle. And I usually have a little like pencil eraser, those little red ones you put on the back of the pencil just to protect my finger as I hold this. But what you're going to do and see if I can zoom in and show you. Do you see the, the white little circle? That is sitting in a groove. That is a little rubber um, seal, a little gasket. Let me see if I can get the light a little bit more lined up for you. 
yeah, it sits in there and that's what actually makes the seal along this plunger unit. So it slides along this and it's tight, it's rubber, it's got a little grease on it so that as it's pushing down or as you're moving this out and in, it's able to make an airtight seal to create the vacuum or to be able to press the sack to make a vacuum. And we'll go over the mechanism a little bit later. but. So what I wind up doing, and sometimes these things have a little bit of pliability left, sometimes they're just straight up dry and pull right out, but I take the needle and I just take a look in, get right in behind it, and just pry it. And sometimes it cuts off some pieces. Yeah, this one's brittle. It's just coming out. It's just breaking. So I'll just chip this one away and see if I can pop it out of the channel and there we go pretty straightforward don't lose it and so that is the old seal I don't know if it started off as white but it surely is now that's it and so of course you've got to have a replacement and I have a ton a hundred so what did I get these vintagepens.com I'll create a link in my in the bottom of my video but these are made to be about the right size and they just where, did I, where is it on the camera no it's okay there we go here's the new one here's the old one Let's see if I can zoom in just a touch yeah so there it is that's what I'm gonna replace it with and the replacing part is actually that's the most fiddly part of this whole thing um, and the, but let me, before I get into that, let me finish taking everything apart. So, screw the seal. I'm actually going to, is that still pretty good? Can I save that? It actually feels pretty pliable. I wonder if I could use a point gasket at the very least, if I had to. But I might reuse that. Put everything else to the side. And the part that I was doing before coming on camera was soaking this part. Now I probably could have had just done nothing and soaked it, soaked it, soaked it and just flushed it out, but I thought it'd be worthwhile showing you guys what it was. So I soaked it and it came off maybe because the glue is a little bit old, but there it is. There's the feed feed and there is the triumph nib it's got some threads on the inside that thread onto this now there's probably some glue that should have been on there and maybe it was it just got dried over time so I'm probably doing a little bit extra by taking it off but that's it Um, this is a little bit different than some of the other models. Some of the slender ones have nibs that just kind of come off as a unit. And I'll grab this guy just to show you. But rather than having to knock anything out, the top of the nib just kind of comes right off, comes off as a unit. And there's like some gaskets in here, but that's getting ahead. But this one happens to be um, a little bit different in that it's just the feed and the Triumph nib, and there's nothing else in there. There's no place for a point gasket, no other seal. Um, that is it. So everything now is taken apart. And what I think I'll do before I get into the nitty gritty of replacing this into the tube, into the barrel, is I'll get this thing cleaned up. I'll do my usual thing. And let's actually take a look. This one actually has a pretty nice imprint still. Let's see if I can zoom in on it. This one's still, maybe, if I can. I apologize for the headache. But this one still has a very nice imprint on it. W.A. Shaper Pen Company, Fort Madison, Iowa, USA. Made in USA. And it's just got some scuffing along it. No big scratches that I can tell. And the same, let's see, let's take a look at the cap. Yeah. Well loved, well worn, but I think we can polish it up. This is a nice big cap band. Gold. Dang it, I'm dropping. 
and a lot of times these big fat wide ones you'll see initials um, in these but this one seems to be untouched it's, yeah I think I have some examples of some others and let's see this bottom I zoom in yeah see it has the vertical grooves in it let's see if I can get it focused so it's got the vertical grooves looks like whoever had this was not a biter because um, oftentimes you'll see scratches and teeth marks in this and this one actually looks pretty good so I won't wind up polishing this I'll, um, well I'll polish it but not with my pads I'll use my polish polish to kind of preserve those and tape off the cap band I'll tape off the imprint and a little bit of gunk on that sometimes these come off too Maybe not on this particular one, but I've had these come off of their own. Um, but this one looks to be pretty in there, so I'll have to make sure I clean some of the gunk on the inside. Mm, anything else? And sometimes I'll tell you where I tend to find issues with these pens. There will often be a crack down here where you screw in. There's often little cracks along this. That's where I tend to find things. I and mean, that's all air hole. Let's see, anything else? And this is the ridged section. I don't see any bite marks, teeth marks, or gouges. So whoever had this was pretty good. Not a nervous guy or girl. And anything else I can think of? No, I think that's it. So I'm going to do my polishing, taping up and polishing, and we'll come back with this thing nice and shiny, ready to be, to be put back together. And I really do think this has some nice pliability still. I'm going to reuse that. And I'll get rid of some of the crud on this. And we'll put it all back together. And I'll show you how this thing works. Until then, we'll zoom back out. And I'll say goodbye. Alright, we're back. Everything is polished up. And I think I have everything laid out, hopefully fairly clear. And I'll kind of go out, go over it with you real quick. But we have the cap. We have the Triumph nib over the feed that will go into the section off to the side. Well, maybe not. We have the sack protector that will go here. We have the barrel that will go over the sack protector. And then we have the plunger tube that's going to have its own little gasket, a screw that will connect the, the end, the blind cap or the knob, to end onto the barrel. And so, let's do the simple thing first. Let's go ahead and size up what sack we need. If I can get some glare away from it, but put it there, put it there. That's 18, 17, not quite. So 18, and like I, I said before, I always go down a size just to give it a little bit of tightness because that's got a little bit of room to play. And not so coincidentally, come back, I have a 17 sack. And so kind of just like a lever filler we're going to fit it based on the depth of our barrel in this case this sack protector is the depth of our barrel so there's our length and then if we imagine that the fact that we are going to be putting the sack protector um, onto the nipple so the actual part that the sack is going to go on is this part right here and this is the lip that's going to keep this the sack protector on. So if we go in there and we imagine that that is our depth, we really need to go to this point. And let's see if I can, if we can just kind of pull this out. So that's where we need to go. I'm going to grab it right there, take it out, and I have my scissors. 
we're going to squeeze it very tight horizontal flat cut and there we have it oh good I do have my shellac uh -huh. so let's see what order should I do this in real quick so I'll get that out of the way let's see if I can go ahead and get I guess I got a little bit out of order so I'm going to put that sack to the side real quick let's go ahead and put our triumph nib and our section in place. So what I'm going to do is if you see threads, they thread on to the conical nib and I'm going to seat it on there and take it all the way on. It's kind of have a sneaking suspicion. No, maybe not. But here's what I'm going to imagine. So I'm going to, this is, this is as far as it goes. And so if I had a piece of chalk, I had some chalk pens where I would make a mark and that's where I know my tip is going to be. But if I just kind of use my finger, I'll, I'll kind of do it um, off the cuff a little bit. I wish I had my chalk pens. But imagine it's going to go right there. So I'm going to take this back off. And screw it. I'm going to put my feed down there and line up the bottom of it with where that conical end should screw. All right, so I'm going to put that there. I'm going to put this over top. Be careful not to mess this up. And I might be able to do a little bit of wiggling with it. I'm going to start screwing it around. go and see it almost matches up and I kind of got a little bit off but I can kind of push the feed a little bit in and there we have it everything is lined up nice and easy and I guess what I could do and I might do this after the video but just put a dot of shellac into the threads and let that seal it I'm making sure not to get it onto the feed itself to clog up any of the feed so that is how I would line it up and so next, I guess I should get this onto the nipple. So we'll pull our shellac out. This is classic stuff, nothing complicated here. I'm going to put this onto the nipple. Nice and juicy. It's not a super big lip, so I'm going to just going to put a, lot, a decent amount of shellac. And I'm just going to forego the forcep procedure and just kind of slip it on. And I like it. I'm going to give it a twirl so that everything is nice and coated. I'm going to take that extra shellac that squeezes out and just run it along the seam. And what I might actually do is just put a little bit along the outside just to really seal it on there and give it that nice seal. Okay, get this off my fingers. And this is when we take the, oh, oh, not quite. I always get ahead of myself. We'll take the talc. made a mess but I'll get it in a second. I'm going to tumble some talc onto it. There we go. Make sure everything's nice and lined up. Take the protector. Pop it on over top. I'm going to get this out of the way since I kind of spilled a little bit. But the show must go on so I'll get that in a second. So there's the shield protector, everything's nice. There's your sack. I can see it right up to the very tip of the hole. You can touch it. Yeah, it's right up to the very tip. So that's good, that's nice. gonna be a nice full fill for this thing. Okay, well actually, since I have to be a little bit fiddly over the camera, I will take a pause real quick and I'll clean up my mess of shellac 
and I have a little bit left. But I'll clean that up and we'll come back and we'll wind up putting the O-ring into the bottom, which is the most fiddly bit. But I'll be back in just a second. Okay, my mess is cleaned up and we're down to the part that oftentimes gives me the most trouble. So this right here is a little bit of silicone grease. Um, I probably got it from Anderson Pens or something like that. I'll, again, include some links. And I may have shown you this before. Mm, maybe. Maybe not. But there's a little dowel, and I wound up putting some duct tape on it. And this may not even suit this one, because this is a fairly large one. But I had made a tool that fits up in here and would stop me from shoving these little rings too far down. Because again, if you recall, what we're going for, I have a look over the camera, is there's a little groove in there where we picked out the old seal. And my intention with this tool was to get it here, there. So it's going to be kind of a, just a stopper. If I can get it into the focus. It's going to stop me from pushing the little seal too far down. And then my other little tool is just some random piece of, I think it's like a little clay tool that I just kind of wound up just breaking and then shaping um, and using this to kind of do a little fiddly stuff. I can't, I can't see it with the camera. Of pushing the seal into its little place. And I'm doing this backhanded, so let me actually switch to the way I would do it. And we use this little bit of grease because that's going to help make a seal. So I just kind of coat it nicely. And here's how I tend to do it. I'm going to show it to you, but I might have to pause and do this off camera because I've, it's really fiddly me trying to watch over, through the camera and do this. So I'm going to put it in there. Oh, this really is awkward, isn't it? But I'm going to put it in there and kind of keep this just beyond the little groove. Put this, put this in, if I can do it. And I wind up just using this stick and pushing it into the groove and I kind of twirl it around. So I'm actually going to do this off camera for a second. If it takes me more than a few moments, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video so you don't get bored watching me. Um, I really do wish I had something better in terms of light. But, let me see real quick. Let me see if I can do it watching over the camera while the camera's on. Let me just, let me just try it. Where did I lose it? Oh, there it is. Haha. -ha. So, let me do it down there. And I'm just gonna try and do the best I can. I'm going to take a pause, but what what you do, and I lost it again, it's so small, there it is, is just kind of keep getting it down to that groove and just working it in, working it in, and it should slip into place. It's just the right size, but yeah, I'm going to have to do it where I can see it a little bit better, so I'll take another pause and we'll come right back when I get this in. Well, I must say, that's actually one of my better times. That actually did not take very long at all. Let me get everything else out so we can focus on this. Let's see if I can help it, help it out. And there it is. It's seated in the groove all the way around. And there it is on the, on the lengthwise. So it's in there. It's kind of nice. Zoom back out. And here's where the proof is in the pudding. So again, I'm going to take some of that grease and I'm going to put it on this plunger around the end here, near this narrow end where it tapers a little bit. And this thing's going to get greasy and I'll wipe it down at the end. I'm going to stick it through there and I'll use my screwdriver to kind of give it a little push. There we go. That's good. Yeah, I can feel the resistance, and the grease helps make the seal. That's very smooth, that's very nice, that turned out really well. 
Get my grease out of the way. But I will take this, drop it back down. I tend to give it a little shake. That usually gets it. Maybe not. It's there. It wants to. There it goes. Comes through. Take my screwdriver. Careful, don't scrape the inside. I'm gonna find where it screws. There we go. There we go. Hold it tension. And I will put it in there and screw it back down. And that is that is it. Sometimes I'll put shellac on the tip of it, but it's not super important. It's more just for keeping it nice and tight. But that's pretty tight. And I might go back. Yeah, I think you can hear that. Yeah, I can hear the air, so I definitely made a good tight seal on it. And then really now it's just kind of undoing what we did. So we have a few solid pieces. And if we put it here, we just screw it down. And you could put a little silicone. Let's do, let's do it. Let's make it a little more airtight. Why not? We'll just make everything a little bit tighter. So I'll just I dab my finger in. And just put a little bead around there and it'll spread out when I thread this back on. There we go. Yeah, you can really hear that. Nice. That was very nice. Screw that back down. And that is that is it. That is a repaired touchdown. And I will take my cloth, because I got all kinds of grease on it. Just kind of give it a good rub down. Yeah. There it is. This is a beauty. All the little minor wares kind of came off very nicely. This shined up quite well. But I wanted to. Yeah. There we go. You can hear the suction happening very easily in this one. So I'm going to let the sack set a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and degrease my hands, wipe this down really well, put a little bit of the Renaissance wax on it, and we'll come back and do the writing sample, okay? We'll see you in a few minutes. And we're back. So I've got it all polished up. Thought I'd give it a bit of a spin for you guys. So. There it is, all nice and shiny. I'll zoom in. I'm sorry, I'm losing some of the color. But I think the shine is quite nice. And there's the imprint, which I'll give you the impression of. It's got the white dot. And a nice image. I'll zoom in on this one, see if I can do something for you. Oh, come on. There we go. Get some glare on it. I'm still trying to figure out my lighting. I'm, I apologize. I keep saying this, and I work a little bit on it at a time. But this is showing me that it's Schaefer, made in USA, 14 karat. It's not having the serial number, which I was reading, could place it a little bit earlier in the line. So what I found is this is a Triumph Valiant because it has the plastic cap, large cold cap band, and once you move up into the metal caps, you get into the crest line. And this is a valley because it's got a little bit of better trim, um, which would be a little bit more than the step down, which would be the Statesman model, which would have the open nib. So coming up to the conical triumph nib makes it the Valiant. And these would probably be uh, 
49, 50, early 50s, something like that. And this is one of the fat traditional models before they got into the thin model. So let me zoom back out. And what I was reading is if there is a serial number, you tend to be in the 49 to 50 range. So this might be a little bit of the early to mid 50s um, Valiant line. And let's see if I can pull out. We'll zoom back out. We'll see if we can get some stats for you. And if this is true, because I have my phone over here with some some, some statistics on it, um, it should be capped. And this is about five and just over five and a quarter. And yes, indeed, the internet verifies that it should be about five and a quarter. And if I say it's uncapped, what am I going to get? From the nib to the tip, just over four and a half. Um, doesn't give me that, but it says if I post it, which lo and behold, it does post and quite securely. That's, that's quite nice. I should get about six, just over, I'm going to get back there, just over six inches and it's saying six and an eight, six and an eighth. So that's, looks about what I'm getting here. And this being a nice fatty, let's come down to this. And it doesn't tell me in the internet what it is, but looks like at my widest, just about behind where I would grip it, looks to be about um, just shy of half an inch. So, what did we say? In all, capped, five and an eighth, about an inch wide. And uncapped, I'm going to go ahead and call it four and five eighths, just over five eighths. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and fill this guy. To do that, I'm going to loosen the knob, pull it all the way up, and tilt this. I'm almost out of this nice ink, so I have to tilt to make sure I can submerge it. And with one hand, mind you, less awkward than a lever filler, but with one hand, I can squeeze it down. I hope you heard those bubbles. Those are nice. I'm going to leave it there for a few seconds. Mm, five to ten, I guess, is a good time frame. But this is a new sack. It should be pretty springy. So let's go ahead and I'm going to turn, down, turn the knob, lock it down. Okay. I'm going to wipe it with my uh, paper towel, couldn't think of the word, and I'll just close up my ink. Okay, so let's see, let's see if maybe you should zoom in on some writing, but let's just put it through the paces. This is a... Touchdown Philip with a Triumph nib. And I said this is probably early 1950s. And let's go ahead and do the sentence. Let's just see how it goes. Pretty good. I think I got a little bit of a skip right here in the top of the F, but I also kind of wonder if I'm rolling a little bit. I mean, this is a Schaefer nib, so it's a little bit stiffer, probably a little bit more unforgiving of being off. So if I roll it, I'm not going to get the line until I roll it and get it back down flat. So I think that's probably what I did. And, oops, I dug into the paper there a little bit. I wonder if I have to align this just a touch. I'm getting a little bit of scratchiness. Yeah, if I run my finger, I feel it. So I need to align these times just a touch. I think this right one is down. Or the, I guess it's left, my right. Yeah, I'm pressed up on it a little bit, but this is some... Oh, 
that's actually pretty good. Just a quick fix. Yeah, it's there just a touch, but it's less than it was. So I do need to align this, so be be aware of that. But it is, I think, as far as these Triumph nibs go, they are not flexible by any means. I mean, that's me giving it more pressure, and it opens up a little bit, but that's not something you're you're going to be doing. I mean, these are fairly stiff nibs. You're, you get what you get, which this looks to be, you know, kind of a big, fine, small, medium, kind of that fine to medium um, middle ground. It depends on what your eye is. And I know there's actually a chart. I've never actually pulled it out or bothered to remember. It's more of a gestalt thing What I think, oh, you know, that's a fine or that's a medium. Yeah, but I guess with my eye, somewhere in the middle. It could be a fine, could be a medium, but mm, after seeing this, maybe it's a little bit more on the fine side, but that's what I'd call it, probably a, a fine. What else, let's see. Um, if I were to hold it right, and right fast, quickly, looks like it's keeping up. This is a good nib, I like it. And shapers in my mind, I've said this before and I'll say it again, they are workhorses. I like shapers a lot. I don't think they get the cred that they probably should have. They're a little less fancy in a lot of the things that they've done, but as far as um, a dependable pen, I think shapers are super dependable overall. What else can I say about these guys? Oh, yeah, let's see how wet this is. Scribble, scribble, scribble. Decently juicy, not a gusher, but it definitely lays down a little bit of ink for you. You can tell. I mean, this is a nice vibrant blue, so it's definitely a good one. And with the amount of fill you get with these, these are pretty de decent fillers. I think you'll get a good amount of writing out of these. Uh, as far as holding the pen, this is a decently relaxed grip for me. I can hold this section, and it lands right here in the crook. So, not terrible. I think I could write like that. So posted or unposted probably is going to be the answer. You can post it. It is secure. And being the injected molded plastic, this does not add a lot of weight. So really, I don't like... Yeah, I don't know that I would tell if you handed that to me blindfolded. Is that posted? Is that not? I don't know. Maybe I'd guess it 50% of the time. But most of the weight is centered up here in this section and, and, the, and the nib area. So it definitely is forward heavy. So that's kind of a good thing to kind of avoid hand fatigue. But yeah, posted, unposted, not a lot of weight in the back. So overall, good design, balanced design, and it still kind of keeps up that tradition of, oops, the balance. I mean, you just, they just haven't gotten away from that. You know, it's tapered at both ends. This is a light material. So in, you know, as a legacy of the balance, their design still holds up. So overall, I think this is great. Um, if I had to comment on this knurled kind of grip section, I feel it, I do. Um, I go through different levels of sensitivity because I do a lot of um, you know, twisting and undoing a lot of pens. So there are various times when I have a lot of calluses on this finger, maybe this finger as I'm twisting things. So right now I feel it. I'm debating in my mind whether it's going to be annoying in an hour if I were to keep writing or if I would just kind of forget about it because I do feel it. And I know, and I, I think I've gone back and forth. I think this one, I feel it. There have been others with that kind of neural feeling that I don't think I mind quite so much. So maybe it's pen dependent, maybe it's finger condition dependent, but. Right now, I'm plus minus. I think I would have to use this to really make a distinction for it. But it's not a pen that I think you could really change the grip on, because either you're up here on the nib, which is not going to be good, or you're way back here, which I guess you'd have to use it posted. But to be back here, maybe. Possibly. But that just doesn't seem as natural to me. I'm, I, I'm kind of like a nicely in the middle holder, so... I'm okay with it. We'll see long term, but I don't think it's a bad idea because definitely if you're a sweaty writer or writing for a long time, I feel like this is definitely going to keep you from creeping 
back up or riding up on the nib. So as a function, I think it's good. But anyway, let me just get off that for a second. So overall, there we go. Very good pen. I think it's good, it's solid, it's a Schaefer writer. Um, you're gonna get a long, long use out of this. So I think these are definitely worth investing in. They, they were made a lot. There are a ton of these around and some in better conditions than others, but if you're gonna invest in one of these, it'd be a good investment for the cheap that you can get it. And now that you know how to repair it, definitely go for the ones that you're gonna repair, save a few dollars, enjoy the investments you're gonna put into these with the time to repair it. And I'd say grab one of these, these are so good. So with that, I'm gonna cut back to another clip that I had done, because I'm redoing this now, because I, I had a little bit of an issue with my audio um, in the middle of everything. So we're gonna cut back to my other clip, and you're gonna see what we will do next time. So if this week we did the touchdown, next time we will come back and we are going to do the snorkel. This nice red guy. And it'll show, be a little bit of a combination of the touchdown mechanism with a little bit of a touchiness that involves the breather tube. So probably what I've heard is the most complicated filling mechanism there is. This will be the snorkel. So next time we'll tackle this one. And until then, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. Let me know what I'm doing right, doing wrong. If you have any cool information about the touchdown, let me know. And we'll talk next time. Bye.